we celebrate you, Lord of heaven, for who you are to us. You've been great to us, marvelous to us. Seeing your good hand at work in us, and we give you praise. And that is why this morning, Lord, we ask that you speak into our hearts by your word and show us again the way to go in Jesus' name. I said in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen to me very carefully. The blessing of God, what we call blessing, they are actually rewards. What is reward in America? Betrat. God does not just bless. You know, we have people in the world today where you go preaching or you meet friends, they tell you, what do you mean by God? How is the whole world in confusion and where is God in it? God does not just bless. As a matter of fact, I'll put it this way. God does not just do anything. He made man, he put man in charge, right? Where we are is where we are brought into. He has sent us helps. He gave us his word. In his word, he has shown us what to do. Do you understand me? He said in Deuteronomy, I lay before you life and death. Is there. Do you understand me? Blessing and cursing is there. You do what? Choose what you want. You, you get my point. Now, if you check your Bible from the beginning, and you look at all the significant men in scriptures, the landmark men, when I mean significant, men that in their days, things changed. The dynamics changed. You talk of a man like Noah, right? He was significant. The heart was caused in Genesis chapter 3. God didn't say anything. When Noah came out, it's not because Noah came out, God spoke. The Bible says Noah reared an altar, right? He reared an altar and he sacrificed to the Lord. When God smelled that, then God spoke. Do you understand me now? God didn't just speak because Noah was the only man I have to do something for, the, for him. Noah did something and God responded. We talk about Abraham. Okay, We didn't know his story before God met him. But if you look at the language God gave to him, God said, well, I'm giving you a condition. Leave your father's house. Did you get the picture? The God called him out of his father to the land that I will show you. And it is in that land where I will bless you. If you don't get there, what happens? You are your own. He said, and I will, I showed you one day, and I will bless you. That is promissory, right? I will do something for you. Then one day, Abraham, we saw Abraham, he began to walk with God, right? In Genesis 14, Abraham gave his tithe to Melchizedek, right? And Melchizedek blessed him. Are you following me? In Genesis, I believe, 18, Abraham made a covenant of circumcision with God, and he became one with God. In Genesis 22, Abraham gave the offering of who? Isaac. And God said, now I know. Now I swear, I, will bless, I bless you. Do you understand me? Things don't just happen. Isaac called his son, Esau, one day. Let me ask you a question. Who's, who is a father that will not want to bless his child? Have you met one? Even the ones you call wicked husbands, they still bless their children. <laughs> now watch. Isaac wants to bless his son, but blessings don't just come. So Isaac told him, you have to do something for the blessing to come. We all know the story, right? What am I just showing us? Blessings don't just come because blessings are rewards to the steps of faith that you take. Now, Jesus Christ died for the whole world, true or false. Did he die for the church alone? No. In fact, there was no church when he died. He died for the whole world. But is the whole world saved? You have to do something. <laughs> do you understand me now? You have to take a step. And that's why I love this scripture that is up there very well. He said, and thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws. Lawyers, if you check the word majorly, are in the top echelon of the most, in terms of the standard of the world, prosperous people. They are the ones who rule mostly. Are you following me? Lawyers. Why? Because they take advantage of the law. You get my point? 
If they are the one who can stand on either side of a case any time, whichever one you pay for. But watch. You will teach them ordinances and laws and you will show them the way that what? They must. It's a must. The way that they must walk and the work that they must do. Are you following me? All roads don't lead to the same destination. Is that understood? There is the way they must walk. And there is the work that they must do. That's God speaking. That's why David most of the times will pray, Lord, show me your ways, O Lord. Lead me in the plain path. The Bible says in Psalm 103, verse 7, he made known his ways unto Moses. And through that, he was able to manifest his acts to the children of Israel. If you check the story of Moses and the writings of Moses, there is one thing you will always see reoccurring. Moses will say, this is the thing that the Lord commanded. So he began to command them. He began to tell them what they do. And even if you check the book of Leviticus, every aspect of their lives is regulated. If this happens, this is what you do. If you don't want this to happen, this is what you do. They are all there. Amen. They are all there. And that is why Christianity is not just a profession. I'm a Christian. And at best, you hear people say, I go to church. Good. God commands you should come to church. It's true. But that's not all. There is the way to go. There is also the work, or work, like Ghanaians would call it, to do for the blessings to flow. And that's why 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 6 says, look at it. And having a readiness is ready to revenge all disobedience when your own obedience is fulfilled. Are you following me now? God is waiting. He's ready. Can I hear you say God is ready? He's ready to move. But for him to move on your behalf, your own what? Obedience must be fulfilled. That is, he's not going to move on behalf of the disobedient. Are you following me? And that's why I say, the way to your rewards, fulfilled obedience, is what makes God moved, moves. And of course, somebody will ask, obedience to what? That is another story. Basically, you say, obedience to his commands. Amen? I said amen. Look at this. Exodus 23, verse 25. He first told them, even before verse 25, my angel will go with you. Don't provoke my angel. God warned them. He's not going to listen to your disobedience. Angels don't play. They don't have patience for your grammar. <laughs> Are you following me? One day an angel came to Zechariah. He said, Zechariah, your prayers have in hand and you are going to have a son. Zechariah said, do you know who you are talking to? Look at my age, look at my wife. Angel said, is it me you are talking to with that mouth? You will not talk with that mouth until that child comes. That's how angels does. It's God that is God, the God of mercy. Are you following me? God told them in the Old Testament, obey my angel. If he <laughs> One almost cut off the head of Balaam. You remember? We, until the all stopped. That can't you see the that's angel, but that's not my story. He said, and then he go down the line and he said, and you shall serve the Lord your God, and then in return, do you understand me? To your service, he will bless you. It's a very clear core statement. And you shall serve the Lord thy God, and he will bless your bread. He will bless your water. He will take sickness away from you. He will fulfill the number of your days. Because the condition is that you do what? You serve him. Amen. Because I remember, I will never forget, a woman in Lagos those days that was kidnapped by ritual killers. People who kill people for money. Ritual killers. And they locked her up in a dark room. A bag was with her. It was not the day of a mobile phone. And this lady remembered, in Winners, we always have this tight booklet. 
those of you who have tight booklets, so that when you pay your tight, you feel one part. Right? I know you are, you are, re you are retired winner. You tear one, put with your offering, so that the church can record. But you have your booklet where you have your records. So this lady remembered that she has a tight booklet in the back. So she took it out in that dark room. He said, God, this is my evidence. I've been paying you my tithe. What is happening? As she was waving that, the door opened by itself. She walked out. You see, most of our misconceptions is that we just think God will do it. God does not just do it. Jesus went to his village where he grew up. They laughed at him. What is he going to tell us? We know him. Are you following? We play together. The Bible says he could there not do any major miracle except heal a few sick folks. Do you understand me now? That's Jesus in the flesh. Amen? He couldn't because they wouldn't believe him. They disregarded him. They laughed at him. He not that he didn't want to. He couldn't. Are you following me? Because you see, what you draw from God is determined essentially by you. God is God no matter what. You get the miracle, is God. You don't get the miracle, is God. You are saved, is God. You are not saved, is God. You live, is God. You die, is God. I mean, it can't grow bigger. It can't grow smaller. <laughs> yeah? Do you understand me? That's why Moses told, ask him, Lord, when I get to the children of Israel, they will ask me, which God, what is his name? He just said that my name is I am. Full stop. Hmm? I am. You can describe it the way you want. So you see, this is where we need to put a lot of focus on. God wants you to be a fruit-bearing person. A functional, useful, productive, are you following my language? Person in his house, in his kingdom. That scripture is up, I've read it many times, and it's very clear. He said to me, listen, you didn't choose me, I chose you. And I'm the one who ordained you, right? And I, had, I know exactly what I want from you. I know what I called you for. I know what I saved you for. I know what I anointed you for. I know what I ordained you for, right? He said that you should go and bring forth fruit. And that your fruit should remain. And then, if you do that, you ask whatever you want. But what do we do? We ask what we want, but we don't do what he says. You understand me? I mean, that's what I'm talking about. Your way to your rewards. So you can now see why certain things are hanging. When your obedience is fulfilled, it will revenge all disobedience of the devil for you. Are you following me? He said, give and it shall be given. If you forgive men, then your father who is the devil will forgive you also. Are you, are you following me? So these are all laid out for us to live a fruitful life. John 8.8 8. Herein is my father glorified that ye bear much fruit. You see? Have job. Thank you. Oh, is it not the one that gave you the water you will thank? Is it the one that came from the, from uh, Mararaba to, to I mean from me, Maganaya? Eh? You are going to Kotobi. You now stop in Maganaya. Is that, does that work? They don't know what we are talking about. <laughs> Glory to God. He said, Hearing is my father glorified that you bear much fruit. I think that should be verse 5. If I'm correct. John, that should be John 15 verse 5. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. 
I am the vine, ye are the branches. He that abided in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Without me you can do nothing. Now go to verse 8. You will see it now. Verse 8. The same John 15. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, semicolon. That is what qualifies you as my disciples. You see, the Bible is for us to receive knowledge, to live by. Are you following me? And as we do, we begin to reap the rewards. There's a very popular story in the Bible that shows us in clear form what we're talking about. There's a story of a man called Mordecai. We know the story, the uncle of Esther. He was a gate man in the king's palace. And one day, he heard some people plotting against the king. That's not his business. He, says, he, he was not only a gate man, he was, he, was a, he was a captive of war. In fact, he should be saying, thank God, let them kill him. Maybe when they kill him, we'll be able to go back to our country, right? But you see, he chose to be right. So he went to tell the people close to the king, this is what those people are planning against the king. And they found it to be so. But nothing happened. To him. They didn't do anything for him. He preserved the life of the king, right? Now, a day came when the prime minister of the land wanted to kill him too. They wanted to kill the king. He preserved the life of the king, right? When the time came for him to be killed, the day before the prime minister will appear before the king, God, who is the judge, do you understand me now? Is the rewarder of all men. He came to the king. You can't sleep tonight. The Bible said there was the sleep of the king troubled. And when the king came up in the morning, he said, something is troubling me. And the king said, the only way anything can trouble me like this is somebody's reward has not been given him. So they checked the book of records and they discovered where it was written that Mordecai did this. Nobody knew he was going, somebody was planning to kill him. But God knows. That's why God is the rewarder, right? And the king said, you mean he did that? What did we do for him? They said nothing. Ah, no, you can't do that. He has to get his reward. Why? Because he has done something. I remember also the story of the, the Shunammite woman. How many of us know the Shunammite woman? She was a wealthy woman, but no child. And I guess she has even grown out of childbearing. Because you can deduce that. But then, Elisha passes through the front of her house every day. And I can, you can be sure that was not the only house there, right? Because she was not Elijah's attention. Elijah was going his way. Then one day, she went to her husband and said, excuse me, there's a man of God that passes in front of us every time. I, I, I notice sometimes he's tired. Why not let's just build a small chamber for him so that he can rest a little while and continue on his journey, right? Elisha was not looking for anything. But she did that. Then one day, Elisha called her. What do you want? She said, I don't need anything. And Elisha said, you don't understand. You have done something. Eh? <laughs> I mean, that's the way of the kingdom. God, don't forget what you do. The Bible says God will not forget your work and labor of love. He said, I mean, that's the way of God. Are you following me? The woman said, look at me. I'm okay. I mean, somebody who could build a house. You know, those days they call it chamber. Today we call it what? House. Somebody who could just build a house for somebody to rest when he's passing by. Do you understand me? Then the servant of Elijah said, ah, oh God, she doesn't have a child. Ah, Elijah said, okay, by this time, according to the devil, you will have a child. The man said, man said, I'm not looking for one. I've accepted my fate. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm just okay. He said, no, Elijah said, no. In fact, if you read there, time is going because I'm tearing off now. Elisha said, thou hast been careful for us. Something must be done for you. She provoked it. That is the way of the spirit. Amen. That is the way of the spirit. So that's why the scripture is that we come to church to learn of the ways of God. The things to do to provoke divine rewards. The things to do to provoke divine attention. Are you following me? 
when you see somebody in trouble and you help them, you have procured for yourself safety from trouble when your own time comes. Eh? When you see somebody in trouble and you rejoice, okay? When your own trouble comes, then people will rejoice. Because you see, that is the way God has set the world in motion. Whatsoever a man sows, that shall he reap. Many of us who come to church, we only think of that word in terms of giving offering. It's far from giving offering. It's the life you live. When you rejoice when people fall, uh, okay, <laughs> wait, your own time is coming. But when people fall and you, it grieves you, oh God, help this man. That is how he help comes when your own time comes. Things don't just happen. Things are made to happen. There is a lot of us in the church world today are not blessed or don't see the hand of God is because we don't understand these principles. Glory to God. When we begin to understand this, you see the hand of God committed to your life. Twelve spies went out. Moses did not tell them, when you bring good report, God will reward you. He just sent them to go and bring report, right? And ten brought evil report. And two, essentially one, Caleb, and his language was so strange. God said, this one, because you have wholly followed me, I will give you where you went. He didn't go there so that he can get it. Are you following me? But when you walk right with God, when you do what he says, the reward follows. That's why Peter had Jesus one day, when he had Jesus, he said, but we, we have left all and followed you. We didn't leave them because we, we are trading. No. Uh, Jesus said, don't worry. There is no man that has left wife, husband, children, houses in this world that will not receive a hundredfold and in the world to come. There is what you do to provoke the release of his blessings. God's reward system, I call it, is tied to your service. God's reward system is the same in, this, in, in life. You work, all of you work, right? You think when they pay you, when they pay you, is because they like you? Eh? If it's because of likeness, nobody is paying anybody in America, you know they like money. You get my point? You, can you work and they say, we don't feel like paying you this month? <laughs> that means your money has come because you sued them. You, you get my point? When you work, you must be paid. It's not favor. It's your reward. The reward of your service. Are you following me? They, they sum up what your work is worth. They pay you. That's why it's the same. God's reward system is tied to your service. The Bible says, every man will bear the fruit of his labor. Amen. You bear the fruit of your work. Revelations 22, verse 12. Jesus said, behold, I come quickly. And my reward, can I say my reward? That's what Jesus said. Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give unto every man. Did you see it? According as his work. Not I like you, I don't like you. My reward is tied to your work. Huh? I will give you according to your work. Hundred work makes hundred rewards. Zero work means zero reward. You will not get zero reward. If you don't want to get zero reward, don't do zero work. So, to give unto every man according as his work shall be. So, we work for his reward to flow. We work for it. I love that story of Mordecai a lot. He wasn't doing it for himself. He was just doing what is right. Amen? And when his own time came, God remembered him. That's another word you see in, in scripture a lot. And God remembered Hannah. Huh? And God remember. If 
I remembered you. Something must have happened with you before. That's why the word remembrance come. You get my point? So all your labor, all your sacrifices, all your service, your giving, your tithe, your walking in the light. A day came, you are in trouble, and God remembers. Amen. And when he remembers, he acts accordingly. And if he doesn't remember, you remind him. He himself said it. He said, put me in remembrance. Oh, you didn't read that one in your Bible? So in case he doesn't remember, you say, God, let me remind you this. Amen. And he's a faithful God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8. I think we read that this morning. He said, now, listen to this. Either plants and either waters are one. And every man, can I hear you say every man? You see, this is what people don't know. If we take a church, for example, whatever is happening in that church, God knows what each person is contributing to it. It's not just a pastor, it's everybody. So he rewards, he, now either plants and either waters are one, but every man shall receive what? No, look up. What did he say? So, Read out loud. His own, his own. Every man is own. That's what I want to show you. Nobody takes another one. And you see, the judge is God. Who knows? No, he's not a Nigerian. If he's a Nigerian now, somebody like Aminu, they just promote him because he comes from the village where all the Maitasines are. You understand what I'm saying? But God rules no favorite. You, you understand me? Even the one you don't know that is doing it, God knows. Eh? That's why sometimes he say, he said, what your left hand is doing. Don't even let your right hand know. But he knows. Eh? He said, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. You can't take my reward, I can't take your own. So, those who are smart in the kingdom do what we always bring them rewards. Amen. Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. Fruit bearing in the kingdom is not just winning souls. I need to establish that. We talk of manifesting the life of God. The fruits of salvation. We call it the fruits of the spirit. Living the life of the kingdom. We talk of doing good works. And of course, we talk of winning souls. Reflecting the glory of the kingdom among men. Amen. The invest Fruit is also always the result of investment. God investing in you is life. The fruits of that life. That's why where you walk, they should be able to know, oh, this is a Christian. The way he talks, the way he relates with us, the things he does. Right? That's why they say this one, everybody is there. We know you go to church, but we know he's not a Christian because the fruits are not manifested. You get my point? So it's not just alone. Um, it's not just alone winning souls. It is also in the life and in all that we do. An unfruitful branch serves no good. That's why Jesus said, every branch in me that bears no fruit, he takes it away. So there must be, you know, the Bible talking in Ephesians, he said, the whole body, look at this body now. Your body is growing. And you see every part of the body grows together in the same measure, right? Your body is growing. But he said the whole body fitly joined together, right? Because the whole body is not just one part. Even look at this hand now. It's not just one bone. They are different bones. But they are all fitly what, joined together. And every part of the body is contributing something for the effective growth of the body. You get my point? There are some parts in your body you don't even know. But without them, you'll be in heaven now. Because they have the job they are doing. So, when any part... What do you call cancer today? I think cancer are dead cells. They are not helping the body, they are killing the body. You get my point? So, any part that is not working for the effectual growth of the body because he's not contributing anything, that's what Jesus said. He said, remove it. He's just weighing everybody down. You will not be an extra weight. Amen. 
Glory to God. There is how to be his disciple. There is how not to be his disciple. I've been concentrating most, mostly on so bearing because that's our focus for this time. Because it's one missing link to your rewards. And that's the truth. We do every other thing but that. But it is one essential missing link that you need to get involved with for your rewards to flow. It's a call to be his disciple. Which is a call essentially to bearing much fruit to the glory of God. Look at John 4, 36. And he that reaps, he's talking of reaping of souls. Reaping of harvest of souls, right? He said, he that reaps receives wages. Those wages are what we call his blessings. John chapter 4, verse 36. He that reaps, can you see that? He wants to pay you. I'm your pastor now. Can I come to where you are working and I say they should pay me? Eh? They will first ask, do we know you? He said, no, you don't know me, but I know you pay people salary here. I want to collect my own. <laughs> but if you work, they must pay you. And what, of, what, what we don't know is that God too pays. When you labor in his kingdom, he pays you. <laughs> I can tell you that. He pays you. He pays you with good health. He pays you with peace. He pays you with comfort. He pays you with promotions. He pays with all manner of blessings. He that repent receives wages. He wants to pay you. But you must produce what you do for him to pay you. And gathereth fruit unto eternal life eternal, that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together. So when we say go for soul winning, it's not just because of church. No, it's a means to you of being paid. Jesus Christ said every fruit tree that bears fruit, he purges it to bear more. He takes the thing hitting you up alive. Are you following me? He takes your concern. He takes your trouble like the song we sang. Say bye-bye to your pain so that you can do more. Huh? Can somebody on the sick bed be winning soul? So he removes sickness. Are you following me? He, he changes the dynamics of your life to make you more fruitful. That's if you are doing it. Your wages in the kingdom are food bearing determined. You can't work and not be paid. God owes no man nothing. What is our job, therefore? It's time to hit the streets and do the kingdom work. You, you hear in our announcement of which uh, Mrs. Taiwo is becoming a professional news announcer. Now, I think you should be working in the Television industry to casting news. Eh? So that your husband will become popular. <laughs> now watch. We said in find, invite, bring, right? Because that's where I'm, I'm closing. We read from John and we had Jesus, uh, John and Andrew. They follow Jesus, right? Immediately they saw in the first thing is Andrew find it Peter. Uh, is it John or Philip finding Nathaniel? They began to go find. They began to go find. That's the way we live. Are you following me? And it's so recorded. John 1, verse 44. Now Philip of, was of Bethesda, the city of Andrews and Peter, verse 45. And Philip finds Nathaniel and said to him, We have found him of whom Moses in the law and the prophets this right, Jesus of Nazareth. So it's our duty to find and introduce them to Jesus. It's our duty. And for that, you get payment. Heavenly payment. <laughs> for that, you get heavenly payment. He takes your troubles away. He takes the thing that will concern you away. He takes your sickness away. He said, thou shalt serve the Lord thy God. He said, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. He takes them away. He finds it. 
Verse 46. And Nathanael said unto him, Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? And Philip said unto him, Don't disturb me. I'm not the preacher. Come and see. <laughs> we have explained that in the course of the, Just come and see. He find it and he bring. That's what they, Go find, go bring, or go invite and bring. Glory to God. John 10, 16. And Jesus said, Other sheep I have who are not of this fool. Them I must bring it. Now, interesting. Peter, the chiefest of the apostles, didn't come by himself. Somebody brought him. Hmm? Somebody brought him. Are you following me? Somebody brought him. And like I always say, the apostles of our generation are in bare palace today, waiting for you to bring them. The women you said these are rotting, they are sluts. They are the prophetess of tomorrow waiting for you. Were you too good to be void? Nobody brought you. Eh? If not, I God save some of you. You will have been carrying sword like terrorists all over the place now. So even the terrorists you are condemning. Somebody, are you following me? <laughs> Somebody brought you so that you wouldn't be a terrorist. They are waiting for you to bring them. I told you my story. If I, people gave up on me, that I could not be saved. You get my point? They are all waiting. Somebody must bring them. And the heavenly records, because that's one thing with God. God does not forget. It will accrue to your account. Amen? It will accrue to your account. That's how he pays us. He said, them I must bring in. That's how he pays us. It's our duty to bring them. That's how he pays us. Very close let me just give us a few tips on um, fruitful service in the kingdom. Fruitful service. Because we are all kingdom stewards. When it comes to the service of the kingdom, first is a personal decision. There is a statement in the Bible that I love so much. As for me, Joshua said, as for me and my house, this is where we are going. David said, as for me, it was in my heart to build him a house. You keep seeing that word as for So you take a personal decision first. Because we just read, every man will receive his own reward according to his own work. According to his own work. And when you choose to go that way, then the first ingredient is willingness. Paul said, if I do this thing willingly, there is a reward. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 17. When he talks of the preaching of the gospel. If I do it willingly, there is a reward. The preaching of the gospel always carries tremendous reward. I'm just showing you the way to your rewards. You have prayed, prayed, prayed. Do this one and see how answer to your prayers will start following in. If I do this willingly... I have what? What is there? I have what? A reward. If I do it willingly, I have a reward. So do it and claim your reward. Your reward is at the mercy of your willingness. It's just the same thing like offering. When you give it willingly, that's the only way it has answer, right? You can be cajoled, you can be forced, you can want to impress people. Zero. It has to be willing. Every kingdom service is rooted first and foremost in willingness. That is making yourself do it. Choosing to do it. And that's where the blessing comes. If you be willing and obedient, you shall hear the foot of the land. It's a willingness. If your service is not willingly done, it is not acceptable. Glory to God. Then you must do it joyfully. Not out of duress. Do it joyfully. Amen. The Bible says, Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and gladness of heart, therefore thou shalt serve thy enemies. I don't want to serve my enemies. Do it joyfully. You have a lot of those things in your notes. Do it joyfully. Amen. Be excited in doing it. That's Deuteronomy 28. Verse 47 and 48. Do it joyfully. Don't do it monthly. Some people come to church. Oh, if I go to church today, pastor will call me. Then don't come because it's a waste. 
Do it joyfully. Do it willingly. Do it joyfully. Do it because it's unto your God. You are inviting somebody. You are preaching to somebody. You are giving. You are doing what? Do it joyfully. That's where the reward comes. Do it joyfully. Every man, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, every man as he proposes in his heart, he said, Lord, so let him give, not grudgingly, of necessity, for God loves a joyful giver. Serve the Lord joyfully. Number three, do it faithfully. Faithfulness is doing something without supervision. Do you understand that? You know, when you are under supervision, no problem, you do it. But without supervision, you are doing it. Faithfulness is taking care of another man's business as your own. Do you understand me? That's faithfulness. When you put something in your care, you put your whole body in it and do it as if it's your own. Not what concerns me, it's not my business. That's faithfulness. That's faithfulness. When you serve God faithfully, joyfully, willingly, there is no way your reward will not answer. Faithfully. Faithfully. You know, the language of scripture is well done, thou good and faithful. Well done, thou good and faithful. And then the reward comes. Jesus Christ said, if you have not been faithful, that's Luke 16 verse 12. If you have not been faithful in that which is another man's. And I, as I was reading that two nights ago, it just opened my eyes. If you have not been faithful in that which is another man, who will give you your own? God wants to give you your own. But this is his yard. He wants you to prove your faithfulness there first. You prove your faithfulness in his yard, he gives you your own. What do you mean by your own? A place where you are distinguished. There is a lot of people who are not being blessed, outstandingly lifted. It's because we don't operate these principles. This is yard. This is yard. You serve him faithfully. Joyfully, committedly, excitedly, he will give you your own. He will give you a place that nobody can contend with you over. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Serve him. Not for position, not for placement. And he will give you your own. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. The Bible says... In all labor, there is profit. How much more the labor of the kingdom? They are waiting for you to find. They are waiting for you to invite. They are waiting for you to bring. And then God will pay you. Oh, he pays you in ways that you cannot even begin to imagine. <laughs> he pays. Can I hear you say God pays? Yeah. The one they pay you in your office, before you know it, you have finished it. The one he pays you, you can't finish. Money can't even buy it. Eh? The one he pays, you can't, money can't buy it. He pays. Amen? Glory to God. God pays. So let's eat the streets. They are your friends, they are your colleagues. Use them to get reward from heaven. That's what we are saying. Use them to get your reward. Eat the streets with him. Do it without anybody pushing you. Commit yourself to it. Preach the gospel. Invite them. When you are doing his own, he takes care of your own. Amen? Oh, I'm telling you, the kind of blessing you don't know is available. You just see them happen without much attention. Amen? This is your moment for rewards your reward will not be lost. God is a God of rewards. His blessings are what we call rewards. He will give you a job far better than where you are that you did not apply for. They will come looking for you that is you we want. We say, oh, I, 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 I'm working here now. I need to give you. Say, forget notice. We'll pay you off. Go and give them. We want you now. <laughs> Amen. Glory to God. There's a way out for you. Do his own. Just technically program yourself and be doing his own. And we'll see what will happen. Amen? He said, I will take that sickness away. Hmm? I will speak for you where you are not present. 
And you know when God speaks for you, nobody can say no. Glory to God. Let's be faithful to him. Amen? And we're, look, we sang a song just now. There is no situation that God cannot turn around. That's why no matter what happens, you can't see me lament or regret. I just continue my life. Because I know there is no situation he can't turn around. Lazarus was dead four days. He turned it around. You are not even dead. You are still jumping all over. So your own case is so cheap. <laughs> your own case is too easy. Maybe he's waiting for you to gather up some momentum before he even does something. Don't let anything intimidate you. Walk with God. There is no situation he cannot turn around. Are you following me? Not one. What are we talking about? There is not one situation that he cannot turn around. There is no situation he cannot change. Amen. All you need to do is position yourself on the correct platform for him to answer you. You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and I have ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. Then ask me what you want. Uh -huh. What again can be more than that? And you are playing with, he said, do this one and ask me what you want. That is a simple thing. Do this one and do what? Ask me what you want. And, and you, even that one you are not doing. And you are still, don't forget about asking. Go do what he says. And you see what will happen. That's why he says some, there are some people before they call and will answer. Why? Because they have fulfilled the condition. Who did Mordecai cry to? He didn't cry to anyone. He didn't even know they were coming to kill him. <laughs> he didn't know. And yes, God moved ahead. He will move for you. What are you talking about? He didn't know they were coming to kill him. But God, before the man would arrive, God was already waiting. Eh? Can you imagine? God was already, he, the man was so shamed that day just because he wanted to kill a man that the reward of life is waiting for him. You can't kill him. You can't kill him. You will go forward. Amen. You will not suffer shame. Amen. Your children will not see shame. Sickness will not know the address of your house. There is no situation this God cannot turn around. Give him the opportunity to do it. As you do what he says, rise up on your feet. I want you to ask God for grace. Lord, help me. I want to move for you. Ask him yourself. Ask him for yourself this morning. He's going to grant you grace. He's going to create the opportunities for you. He's going to help you to move in the right direction so that you keep drawing on rewards from above. And the labor you have labored, your rewards will start answering to from today. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I call upon you today the God of rewards. He said, the God that answered by fire, let it be. You always answer. God of rewards, answer here today. In the lives of all these ones. For their faithfulness to you. Their commitment to your church. Their work with you. Answer this morning. May the answer that comes from the presence of the Lord. Land in your house today. That very answer. Whatever has been hanging it. I command the total rest of his answer in your life today. This week will be a week of answers for you. Divine answers will locate you. Divine rescue will come your way. In the name of Jesus. Rescue from the jaws of death. Rescue from the hold of humiliation. Rescue by the very hand of God. Divine rescue is your portion this morning. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Whatever is making you to shed tears. And weep in secret. Today in the name of the God that is above all gods. In whose hands are the deep places of the heart? It is in the name of Jesus that I speak divine answers to those situations for you this morning. In the name of Jesus. You will rejoice over those situations. You have wept enough. It's time to rejoice over them. The hand of God that we serve will make you rejoice over them. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. Take your seats.